uh, the third resources talk this morning. Uh, we've covered agriculture, we've covered geology, and I'm the forestry guy today. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about uh, our work in forestry. Um, when Richard asked me to give this talk, I, I didn't know where to put the boundaries. Um, so I, I defined them fairly clearly as, as the LIDAR component of our research that we've carried out over the last decade. And I can now say decade. My goodness. I've um, been working with this stuff for 10 years since the year 2000, and I'm going to run you through a bit of the history uh, in, a few, in a few minutes. Um, over the last 10 years, a number of people have been involved in this work, and I'm going to show slides that have been accumulated over this time frame, um, but also the people that have contributed to this. Uh, this isn't just my presentation, it's a presentation of, of colleagues in the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources, the Canadian Forestry Service, the Canadian Wood Fiber Center. Uh, and a host of graduate students. Um, so I'd like to pay uh, a particular tribute to Murray Woods, who's actually giving a similar talk to this at Geotech. I gave it yesterday in Toronto. Um, and he's been the big promoter of this in, in the Ontario government, I would say, uh, in terms of the Ministry of Natural Resources. And he's sort of driven a lot of where this direction has gone. Um, Kevin Lynn was the first PhD student working in this area and started uh, his PhD in 2001. He's now running a very successful consulting company. Uh, where he deals with this type of data. Uh, Doug Pitt from the Canadian Forest Service is involved. Uh, <coughs> I guess I'm supposed to use the Canadian Wood Fiber Center for Doug instead of Canadian Forest Service, but uh, I have a difficulty differentiating the two. Dave Nesbitt from MNR. Valerie Thomas, some slides of hers. She's a PhD student of mine. She's now in the Canadian Forestry of Virginia Tech. Um, Dave Etheridge, another MNR personnel. And current graduate students, Karen Van Avick and Mick Seldy are also working on this work. So I, I wanted to walk you a bit through the history of where this research began. Um, and I, I, I find it somewhat satisfying and gratifying that uh, Richard asked me to do this because I can sort of track how this research has evolved primarily through OCE. So I, I'm sucking up right now, okay? Um, but this work began with OCE and geoid in 2000. Um, a project by the title Three Dimensional Analysis of Forest Structure and Terrain Using LiDAR Technology was initiated in 2000 and ran for two years, uh, jointly through OCE and GEOID. Uh, and this is where we started to test the feasibility of using LiDAR. LiDAR has been around, uh, and airborne laser profiling has been around for 30 years. Some of the first papers are from the early 1980s. But the real crux came uh, in, the, in the late 90s uh, when scanning systems became available. And that was part and parcel through evolution of GPS and inertial navigation systems. Uh, we began to move from profilers to scanning systems. Now we're getting wide area coverage. And now I'm, I'm thinking about uh, doing provincial inventories using this type of technology. So I'm getting a bit of a head myself about getting there. Uh, um, second phase was also funded through uh, OCE through another project. Um, once we determined that, yes, this technology works for estimating biophysical variables uh, and structure of forests, um, then we had to figure out how do we make it cost effective? How dense does the data need to be? Those types of questions. Uh, so the second project here, or I call phase two, uh, was looking at acquisition and processing methodologies to make this more feasible for operations. Um, and that was funded through strictly an OCE project, uh, evaluation and development of lighter data acquisition standards for forest inventory uh, applications and predictive forest site classification. That project has just ended, um, and there are a number of things coming out from that. We've now entered phase three, uh, which is funded by GEOID. I'm waiting on OCs uh, for use and so on. Um, but now we've, we've, we've gone operational. Um, we've, we've, we're going to be collecting, we've already collected the LIDAR data for a million plus hectares in Hearst and we're going to apply our methods to do an operational forest resource inventory using LIDAR. And we're going to try and change the paradigm somewhat in terms of forest inventory. I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, so now we're looking at a, a project where uh, we've moved through phases one and two. We've solved some of these issues. And now we will have to demonstrate that it's, it's uh, can be successful for large area acquisitions uh, through this particular project. Um, two slides on, on forest background, uh, essentially the impetus for this, um, and I could go on and I could get colleagues to go up and talk about these aspects as well. Uh, but here we have Ontario. Uh, Ontario has a huge forest resource base. Um, all of Ontario is 108 uh, million hectares. 
productive forest, approximately 57 million hectares. And currently, the province is going through the process of creating a new forest resource inventory, sadly without LIDAR. Um, but hopefully, in a, in a few years, it will start to infiltrate uh, that process. It's still based on uh, aerial photography. So the photography is now digital, so they've moved into that in the soft copy realm of doing the photo interpretation. Um, but we're moving along and showing or trying to demonstrate how LIDAR can be integrated into that uh, to provide, uh, new types of value-added products. So in terms of internal forestry, uh, both from the strategic point of view and the tactical uh, point of view for planning, requires accurate land-based information. That's our goal. We're trying to identify accurate and precise estimates of various types of forest variables. And we're using LIDAR to do that. Um, so information requirements uh, vary with different types of silvicultural treatments. Um, clear cutting is still the dominant way of harvesting forests, but there are other silvicultural treatments uh, being applied uh, to manage Ontario's forests. But we need to enhance our information on these particular species, and that's what I'm not going to talk much about today, because that's a different technology. We're getting height, density, size class distribution of trees, basal area, volume, biomass, uh, from a variety of perspectives. Uh, people have mentioned LIDAR this morning. This is my LIDAR 101 slide. Um, essentially, now we have an aircraft with a scanning uh, system. The Europeans refer to them as airborne laser scanners. Uh, we tend to call them as LIDAR systems, like detection and ranging. Essentially, sending out hundreds of thousands of pulses uh, in a few seconds, scanning across the, the path of, a, of an aircraft, and collecting geopositioning information at each point uh, returning from that particular pulse that's transmitted. So systems are now basically transmitting up to 150,000 pulses per second. Yes, per second. Um, these interact with objects and surfaces at the Earth's surface. Um, and I, I don't just say objects, because objects sort of uh, give the idea of something solid and hard, but permeable surface as well. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk a bit about some of those aspects uh, in a few minutes. Um, but these pulses strike the surface and they, they, they reflect back to the system and trigger a location. So for every pulse that's transmitted, you can get multiple returns. So you may have 150,000 pulses per second. You may get one to five returns from a single pulse. So you can see the data sort of growing exponentially as we're flying along here. Uh, but for each of those returns, we have an X, Y, and Z, okay? Geopositioning of where that pulse interacts. Um, we also have an intensity value, which I won't talk about today because we haven't really done much with it because we really don't understand much about it. Uh, but anyways, that's, uh, that's a topic for a different day. So we get these positions in X, Y, and Z. Uh, and again, the systems we're dealing with, we refer to as discrete systems or time of flight systems. So they send out a, a, a laser pulse at a, at a near infrared frequency. It records discrete returns coming back. But you can also get systems that actually digitize the full waveform that comes back from that particular return. Um, we're not dealing with those in this particular work. So this is what we get. When I saw the, the title of the talk before, I, I, I got excited. But I got excited because I thought, well, three dimensional point clouds. He's going to talk about point cloud analysis. Um, well, different types of, of, of references here. But here we're dealing with a point cloud. That's what we're working with. Now, I could stop at this slide and just go on. And I, I might for a few minutes. But um, here we have the data that we receive from this particular type of system. And you can visualize what we have here. We have a whole bunch of points. It's a sampling exercise. Okay? For those of you who have taken statistics, we have a nice sample here of our forest. Depending on how much material is in that vertical column will affect how many samples we collect from that vertical column. There is a relationship between the amount of biomass and its distribution and the characteristics of this point cloud. 